What's up, Steve Kirks? And it's Doty. And Doty, you got some big news to uh, kind of drop on the pod today. Yeah, it's, uh, it's official. I am now going to be the new assistant women's basketball coach at University of Wisconsin. Coach Doty, kind of big. Good time. old Madison, which is actually great that um, we ha- we chatted with our guest today about different golf courses in Madison, Wisconsin. So definitely looking forward to that on top of coaching. Yeah, on the pod today, we had two-time PGA Tour winner, Brian Hinegar, whose most famous uh, golf moment is he led the masters in 1995 after 54 holes and his business um partner amy best simonton who amy is a high school state champion uh two-time oregon am champion played golf uc davis i believe she played in a couple of national championships and it was awesome just listening to what they had to say yeah and their trip to augusta and just epic stories and then their uh, adventures that they're doing now with uh, the golf farm. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. They have a lot of awesome stories to share about Augusta. I think everybody needs to tune into that. I also thought the banter was probably one of my favorites all time, just because we had a bunch of different eras in there and it was awesome. So let's get into it. Let's do it. Brian, and Amy, welcome to the pod. Oh, we're, we're, it's exciting to be here. Yeah, Thanks for having us. We don't know too much about podcasts, but we're going to get started. (laughs) We're kind of newbies. You, uh, you're the first duo to be on the pod. Oh, it's usually just singular. <laughs> just singular. <laughs> oh, I feel about that. I think Amy should be on this solo then, probably. Way more <laughs> wisdom packed into that brain of hers. No. no. Uh, what do you guys, you guys got something you're sipping on? Yeah, we got some coffee. I'm trying to wake up, you know. Dodie, what are you sipping on? Some good old clutch coffee. Yeah, help, help wake me up in the morning. Let's go. Clutchcoffeebar.com. What are you uh, What are you sipping on, D-Kirks? Some Clutch Coffee. Shout out our mugs. These are sweet. I didn't do these, but they're sweet. Those are sweet. Those are? Oh, wow. <laughs> Get the logo on there. Yeah. Dirks and Dottie. I, I dig that. <laughs> so um, let's give a quick background on Brian. Brian, you grew up. You went to USC um and right after college you turned pro in 1987 uh-huh. you're you kind of had like a journeyman career early right you, you started on the golden state tour yeah well, i was journeyman period Tur- uh, okay yeah i mean I'll, I'll fill in the uh the people that are listening in a little bit uh one year of high school golf uh, my ambition was really tennis growing up so i thought i was going to maybe play college tennis but i kind of got burned out quickly i, I won't for you all with it but I walked on the on the, the golf team um was not good enough to really make the golf team but the assistant coach Randy Lyon who became the head coach just saw something unique in me thank good goodness and kept me on the team as I kind of kept honing my skills started to participate on the team as a sophomore um again I was pretty ambitious to get good at golf and then I was all-american my last two years um so my trajectory was climbing pretty pretty steep, uh, without any sophisticated coaching or anything. I was just kind of doing, I was picking range balls at Wilshire country club, my freshman year, uh, two evenings a week. And I just turned the range picker lights on and start pounding balls. And I, I, truly it's a true story. I got good at golf because I just wanted to be, I went to school and I just hit as many balls and putted as many balls as I possibly could, which took me to Ultimately, I started playing the Golden State Tour uh, somewhere in the late 80s. Like you said, I think I did turn pro in 87. Um, I was pretty good at the pot game stuff. It's no different than playing with your buddies. You just kind of throw a bunch of money in a yeah in something and you go play for it somewhere. Um, but I, I loved it. I embraced it. I enjoyed that process. Ultimately, got on the Ben Hogan Tour, which um, finished second on the money list one year to give me um, the ability to go play the PGA Tour. But, you know, the PGA Tour was a it was great to me, but it was hard. You know, like you said, you mentioned, you use that journeyman word, um, l- lots of tour schools, you know, like, am I going to make the 120 top 125? You know, am I going to have some access for five years, 10 years, 20 years? How long am I going to be able to do this? Cause I did love it, but it was hard for me. You know, I was a grinder, I was a warrior. Um, but somehow I played the tour for uh, probably about 15 years, basically. 
And then uh, took about five years off. That's where Amy and I kind of met when I started coaching when I was about 45. And then I played the Champions Tour for about five years, which I, I loved dearly. Yeah. Yeah. You <clears throat> you glossed over a bunch of like awesome little snippets in there, which is great. You did win twice on the PGA Tour. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people that play on the PGA Tour that don't ever win a you know, anything, let, a, let alone one tournament and you happen to win the same tournament twice. Granted, it was renamed, right? Yeah. Um, yep. So, you know, I've never won a tournament. Well, I, I mean, not a PGA Tour tournament. Does, does this wear you down? Like, what's the next week look like, you know, coming back as a repeat champion too? What was it, four years later? Um. Um, I don't know. It's been quite a while ago. You dream of it though. I was, I was one of those guys that, you know, I, I spent time in my car driving this country for years, basically, you know, from stop to stop. And I was that guy that would like, I would visualize myself winning a tournament, walking off the last hole with, you know, the, the, the big check, you know, basically though, like for me, it was a lot of times it was financial because I was struggling financially a lot. You know what I mean? Like I'd make a little and then I'd lose and then I'd make a little and lose and those kind of things. So to think that I could win and get the opportunity for a two-year exemption, possibly, if you want a major, it would be five to 10 years. I always dreamt of that, like security. That was kind of part of, part of why I was so driven though, is to get, you know, fin financial security basically. So Winning a tournament for me was, yeah, I mean, that's the ultimate reward, basically. But to me, it was, God, I get to play more golf on the PGA Tour. It <laughs> yeah. wasn't really about the money. The money was just to, to, I could pay my bills and things like that. But I really wanted to stay there for as long as I possibly could. So winning to me was uh, was everything, but it was just so hard. Like when we watch the PGA Tour, we see all these really successful guys, because that's kind of who we see, Dustin Johnson and Roy McIlroy and Justin Thomas and now that some of the young guys like Colin Morikawa and stuff like that, I wanted to be one of those guys. Those guys are, but the majority of the tour is struggling. Yeah, There are a lot of guys that miss the cut each week. Some people like, like it's week after week after week, they might miss three, four, five cuts in a row. I mean, it's, it can be really discouraging and tough. So a lot of times the, the viewer doesn't really get the glimpse of the real, you know, tour and all the, the struggles that go along with it. Yeah. This is a side topic kind of, but I don't think too many people understand the finances behind how kids turn pro, you know, they don't turn pro and immediately sign, you know, six figure deals with Nike or TaylorMade or anything. They have their friends and their family backing them or yeah. for a potential share of an earnings or something, right? Do you, you guys probably know more about that than I do. Can somebody, one of you guys give me a quick overview of that? I mean, I, I think Brian's story is pretty cool with that because I think you ended up paying paying everybody back at some point, right? Maybe yeah, I did. Yeah, put in, which yeah. I think is a super cool story. Mm -hmm. Like, probably made you feel pretty good to to give that money back to those people that supported you. I think it's really important. I, I, I you know, that some of the kids that we coach that are aspiring to go do it, um, financial support is like imperative. Like, you can't go out. I was pretty good at it early. I mean, I, I did it for a couple of years by myself, but still is a lot very worrisome so basically you go out to to you know friends and family and things like that and you you sell shares of yourself you get it and you, it feels better actually and you raise maybe you raise a couple hundred thousand to get you through three or four years of playing mini tour golf because the likelihood of you ever playing the pga tour is pretty slim and secondly if you ever want to play the pga tour you have to be super organized which they don't get very well they give it um, we have a, you know, we have a mutual friend with Zach Fouché, who I thought was really gifted, but I don't think he ever really set himself up for, you know, the long-term plan. It was kind of short-term and short-lived, but he had the talent to go do it. Um, and there's a lot of them. So once I got over that, because I, I did that after a couple of years, I got some investors and it really helped me. It freed me up. I could not eat at McDonald's every day or stay at Motel 6. I actually had the freedom to like, okay, if I don't play great this week, I'm still okay. So that's kind of how they go about it. And I, I kind of draw on those wisdoms from my past experience to help support some of the guys that want to go do it. But yeah, so that's kind of how it goes. And, and do you we'll, find yourself being an, an investor now? Oh, for sure. 
for With young players? The right situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'd love. In fact, I always thought, because I know Ernie Els created this foundation to support, like, I think Louis Oosthuizen and, and a few other guys that play the PGA Tour do that kind of thing, because it'd be such so fun to have a pot full of money that you could go support kids that want to go do what I did, because it is awesome. And some of them, you know, like, we're in that culture right now where they, they need to be hungry, though. And mm -hmm. somehow, you know, like golf is still, you know, it's a white man's game. It's a pretty privileged sport if you're a member at a country club and typically your parents have resources and things like that. It takes hunger. And I don't know if some of these kids, even though have, they have ability far surpassing what I had, but they didn't have the heart that it takes to go do it. And that's what would be fun to kind of share my story and go, you guys, you've got this opportunity. I'm going to help you go do what you want to do but believe me you got to feel like this is your way out you know this is your ticket to success or something yeah yeah it's not like oh here's here's a lump sum of money good luck like if you don't win oh well it's like no like make sure like act like that's your own money and then go after it perfectly totally. that's yeah. perfectly said yeah that's awesome though <laughs> i because i mean from an outside like i love golf yeah daniel has been trying to teach me uh more just throughout this past year mm -hmm. And, but just from the financial side, like you hear like, oh, country clubs, but you don't realize like the financial burden of players, like you have to pay to play. Yes. So that comes from somewhere. So that's a very, very interesting. It's great to hear that there's investors out there too. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I use that word imperative. It's, it's really important that these kids get organized. I've never seen so much talent. I got a quick story. So I get blown away in the golf farm a lot. Daniel blows me away. <laughs> Same. Plus, no, I love him up. <laughs> but we do. We we see the good, bad, and the ugly in here, right? We see the beginner to like some phenomenal college player. Yesterday was a shocker. So a guy walks in. Amy does my schedule. Big, good-looking guy. Strong. I can already tell. Athletic. It wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. It, it. But but you are a super athletic, Dan. You don't give yourself enough credit. Uh. So I'm like, so I usually get to, you know, 10 minutes of, you know, what's your ambition? What's your goals? What kind of player are you? Have you had much instruction? Because instruction can be really technical and, you know, screw people up. And, and I'm very um, afraid that I don't want to do that to people. I want to give them what they need. So we kind of go through that for about 10 minutes. He steps in the box and I say, hey, just, have you ever sit, hit inside before? He goes, yeah. I said, just, you can chip or something. He goes, no, I'm good. So he grabs a seven iron. Okay, I've seen some long hitters before. The first seven iron goes 235 yards, and I'm I'm I look at Trackman. I'm like, yes, <laughs> wow. And I go, I'm like, oh god, my. I mean, I could tell you it was fast, right? But not that fast. So I'm like, okay, Trackman's acting weird. You know what I mean? So he hits another one. Same thing. 105 ball speed or head speed. 150 ball speed with the seven iron. They both flew over over 230. I'm like. Oh, and then I'm like, what am I going to do with this guy? You know, both pretty good. And they, I've never seen that kind of speed before with a seven. That's like Kyle Berkshire. You know, it's long drive guys. It's, that was a shocker. Is he, is he a be, he's not a beginner. I mean, what's his? He's, no, no. He plays at the Oregon Golf Club. He's a former professional baseball pitcher. I could tell the guy was. Yeah, he definitely looks like a baseball he player. He looked strong and bit, you know, like that. But still, that was another level of speed. Did he swing you know, a golf club like he was a baseball player? Uh, a little bit, yeah. But yeah, definitely good. Pretty good. I mean, pretty good, actually. 150 ball speed with a yeah. seven iron. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to, like, I've never seen, I see seven irons going 200 yards with fast players, but 235? I'm like, what just happened? That's awesome. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Sorry, I had to share that topic. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so you're kind of, your claim to fame in your uh, PGA Tour career is the 95 Masters um i'm wearing your shirt what kind of made you famous after three days 54 holes you're leading the masters going into sunday a share of the lead um did you sleep that night no <laughs> no it was saturday afternoon um when i was finished was you know you was i was the top i had ascended to the top of the mountain i had got up there i was literally on top it didn't need to i didn't need to finish sunday because I had my family, I had my parents, a few close friends, you know what I mean? And I was like, it, does get, it doesn't get any better than this. And really, people are just trying to get to know me. Like, who's Brian Henninger? I mean, like, I know, I'm a nobody. 
And to me, I was sucking it up because like, again, my trajectory was going like this. So I was enjoying every, you know, my mini tour struggles, you know what I mean? And then making the PGA tour, having my first win, I was enjoying the whole process, but I felt like I was, I could take responsibility for being up there and I wanted to be up there and suddenly I'm there. And, you know, instead of like 10 people in the media room, there's 500 and I was just, and I basically, anyways, back to what we were talking about. I kind of exhausted myself Saturday evening. I was enjoying the process so much and sucking it all in. And it was like I had won the tournament and you don't tee off until about two 30 the following day. It's a long time that morning, you know, I mean, I don't, yeah. of course I don't sleep very much. And then I'm like, when, you know, usually I go to the course, so it's pretty efficient. Like you get there a couple hours early, go through a little routine, a little exercise, eat a little food. You know, you've got, you've got you 50 minutes, you know what I mean? Putting green, you know, a few balls hit in the air, back to the, the um, usually a bunker or something. And then right to the first tee, it's really easy. This one was like in slow motion. Uh, Just taxing. How, yeah. how old were you? How old were you? Uh? Um, let's see, it was 95. What was I? You know, mid to early thirties somewhere. I, I mean, I'd spent some, cause I didn't make the PJ tour until I was about 28, I guess. And so I was kind of late to that. I, I'd spent a lot of time playing golf. So I was, I was, my mind was mature with golf, but um, that's but still, kind of, yeah, the, those are long days, especially with the adrenaline going and not oh. being able to sleep in it for, yeah. It's and I didn't, hot outside. yeah, it was all those things. And then all the people, but also like, I hadn't, I wasn't familiar with that stage. You know, I'd, I'd mm. won tournaments and I'd led tournaments and stuff like that, but not at the PGA tour level. Yeah. It was just an exponent. And then I felt like it was, it was kind of like Ben Crenshaw or me are going to win the turn. Well, good Lord. There's Greg Norman and Fred couples and Jay Hawes and Davis love and Nick Feldman, all these people around me. And I'm like oblivious to that. I'm going off last and it's Ben Crenshaw and I, and we're playing, you know, a match play thing or something. I was, yeah, I was baffled by the whole thing and I didn't really have any support again I didn't have a coach I didn't have a somebody out there a team of people that were like okay get your shit together because we got to get to that first tee and we got to like we got to go battle you know yeah yeah I mean so you you ended up finishing t10 yeah uh, you know best finish in a major but it was your first masters ever we'll, we'll circle back it was like a young Zalatoris moment yeah, or Zalatoris. Actually, he he probably wore more appropriate fitting clothes. You were wearing like a three x three XL polo shirt. I mean, it's like bad. Um, <laughs> lost your card in two thousand and two. Kind of like bounced around for the um, you know, remainder of your career. Played five years on the Champions Tour. You said, when yeah. does your path cross with a Amy? So I was about 45. I'd fought a few injuries, but basically my mind was absolutely just destroyed from all the, you know, the years trying to play the PGA tour. So I was asked by a gentleman up at the Oregon golf club to coach his son one year. And I said, sure, I'm not doing it. You know, I, was, I, I wasn't really sure what my ambition was for the next five years until the champions tour. And that segued into more people reaching out and going, you know, would you do this? So I met Amy when she was in high school and then they reached out and I started coaching her um, then and through her college career. Amy showed the most appetite for it, the, the most interest, the most, um, I want to bond with you. I want to be around with you. I want to learn from you, that kind of thing. And then um, I knew that after she tried to play professional golf as well, I knew after that, that she was very interested in being a, an instructor, a coach, uh, that kind of thing. So it was very easy and natural for her to be that person that I wanted to come do the golf farm with. And she's a, she's a, she's a female and I want her to help females get more interested in the game. Cause I think we can grow the game in that regard and to see Amy hit a golf ball and her, uh, her passion and stuff is, is so admirable really. I mean, it's very cool. So she's, She's amazing, really. And she's probably teaches better than I do. Well, yeah. I only, I've only learned from the best, so that, that helps. <laughs> no, we're still learning. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> so what's your side of that, Amy? You, you met Brian. Did you know anything about Brian's playing history before you kind of jumped in, or were you just naive to it? 
Um, a little bit. Like, I kind of remember he would hang out at the club, like with Max Carter and a couple other kids I went to high school with. Um, and like he walk, yeah, total legend. Shout out <laughs> to the legends at Oswego Lake. Um, and he would kind of walk around. We'd go out and play or something, and he'd walk around and be in the group. But I don't know if I really knew about his career until I maybe like did a little Google search or something. But, um, but then I, I definitely just reached out. I think I had just played in, like, I qualified for um, the LPGA event here and kind of just struggled with my ball striking a little bit, like, that summer, and I reached out. Um, and I think, like, what, what was important to me was just having, having conversations with somebody that's kind of, like, been in your shoes or somebody that's been in the shoes that you want to be in, you know, and um, knows what it's like to, you know, lead a tournament on the last day or knows what it's like to just walk to the first tee, you know, feeling nervous and just somebody to – have those conversations with and you know the thing I love about Brian is just how positive he is and um you know that was something that I needed in my life for sure when I was in college because I had a lot of people kind of like putting pressure on me and it was just nice to have a resource where I could like have those conversations like about what I'm feeling or thinking and just somebody that knew you know at least could relate and so um and so then it just kind of went from there and um yeah, I was trying to kind of like learn more about the golf swing and he sent me to, um, to work with some different people and we kind of learned together. And then my parents were kind of like, we're done paying for this professional golf thing. So I had to go get a job and, um, hold on, hold on. don't, don't skip over that. So yeah. af after college, you tried to play on the Symmetra tour. You did play on a Symmetra tour yeah. and yep. that's, yep. that's what you're talking about. Your parents were paying for you to play on the Symmetra tour. Yeah, I had done what you guys talked about a little bit. Like, I'd raised some money just with some people at the club. Um, I didn't do the best job at it. Like, trying to, you know, we, you know, trying to, like, sell yourself and, you know, get people to, like, help you. is pretty hard to have those meetings with people, like, and I was just not very good at it. Um, I wish I, like, looking back, and we talk about this with some of our kids, like, I wish I'd been, like, working a little bit or something, like, to just kind of, like, first of all, give yourself like something to do, you know, when you're not competing that maybe takes your mind off of, you know, stressing about golf. Um, and then also makes you feel like, okay, I got some money coming in. This is, I'm going to be all right or whatever. Um, so I wish I had done a little, like a little bit better job with that, but, um, but yeah, I played the Symmetra tour for like three years. Um, all the while I was still kind of trying to get better at golf and still like really fascinated with like, getting some of my questions answered um and which was super cool because brian was like well why don't you go work with this person and why don't you go ask him questions and then i'd fly somewhere and go take a golf lesson from somebody and then kind of talk through it with him and then we'd we'd be like oh that's cool like let's try this and let's try that and then we were sort of like learning different things from different people it was perfect because i'd send her you know what i mean to go learn and then bring the information back to me oh yeah we learned from a variety of people yeah which was very helpful because everybody's got a different style and you need you actually need a lot of tools and it it really helped us be better instructors really yeah it's it's yeah. interesting that i'm going to circle it to Dodie here you know in basketball basketball coaches are always like you know in the summertime they go watch this coach lead this practice i feel like golf like golf some golf coaches are so worried about like keeping their kids or keeping their knowledge themselves that they yeah. don't want to yeah. share that information it's really mind-boggling to me it's totally odd in our industry for sure um but we try to not be that way um as best as we can but yeah it's oh. pretty it's pretty weird it's a pretty weird industry that way but um again, just, just lucky that we've kind of been able to learn together and been, been super open-minded. Like, you know, I feel like people sort of pick on each other, you know, like in the instruction world, like, oh, that guy, you know, just teaches this way, or this guy just teaches, you know, and they're kind of picking on each other. And it's like, I just feel like that's unfair unless you actually go and you get in front of that person and you learn from them, then maybe you could kind of say like, okay, maybe this doesn't quite work for me or whatever, but um, but there's definitely a lot of that going on. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Dodie, you know, are you, have you played golf for very long? Me? Yeah. I mean, no, no, I was no. probably, yeah, probably not. Like I've played more this past year than I have in my entire life. And I, I've played what six or seven times. You like it? Love it. Oh, good. So, cause you love it because it's kind of hard. Like on the next one's going to be better than the last one. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. and it's, yeah, every game's different. My golf swing is different every time I swing it. Like, yeah. trying to work on that. Like, and I, so I played basketball in college yeah. and I was a shooter. So, I like, playing is almost like shooting where totally. it's still mechanical yeah. and it's yeah. mental. And so you have to have all, like, all these different things. If one thing's off, then you might shank it or you might hit the back rim or whatever it is. So yeah. I love that part too. And Daniel's like, it would be like, Dodie, back up. Dodie, move your hips. Dodie, which, and he's great because yeah. that's how we got along so well is that he would just say something and I'd adjust real quick and then I would hit it straight and I'm like, holy shit, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> so I love like that part of it too. And just yeah. kind of keep staying focused for 18 holes, which is a long time to stay focused. Oh, I bet you're really good at it. Dodie. I don't know, DK, what do you think? Bombs. Bombs? First time we played at Oswego Lake on nine from the women's tee, she almost drove the green. Dead serious. <laughs> yeah, right? Don't, I mean, like, she hits bombs. Sometimes they don't go I straight, rip it and rip it, baby. but she hits bombs. I mean, Heck yeah. Um, but yeah, okay. I love it. It's really fun. Circling back to you guys. So, Amy, you get out of school, you're kind of you need to go get a job that's where we kind of left your story you need yeah so my so my parents are like we're we're over this you're you gotta work or something um and and so I um trying to think at the time I was like I still really wanted to like get better at golf so I was like I'm gonna just be around golf whether I work in a pro shop or whatever I do um so I like applied for a few jobs my college coach um at UC Davis where I went to college she's She's at Stanford now. Um, and so I think I had a conversation with her and she's like, well, there's a club that we play at down here. They're looking for a women in, uh, women instructor. And um, so she just set me up with an interview and I got the job and I've never taught a golf lesson before. <laughs> and so- um, There was a I, lot of text messages for a while. Brian, what do I do here? Yeah. Brian, what do I do there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've kind of lucked into that whole situation, but it was great. Um, and definitely just got my feet wet with teaching and just, just learn by, you know, failing a lot, which is kind of what we do every day. But, um, but it was, it was a great, um, start for me. And then, you know, at that time, Brian was playing the champion store. And so, um, we sort of had this idea, um, when his kind of career was dwindling down a little bit and, um, we finally just pulled the trigger on doing it, um, here and moved home and, now we've just been grinding away. What what is here? What we're what are we talking about? Oh, we're at Dodie, the Dodie doesn't know either. We're at the golf farm in Tualatin, Oregon. What is the golf farm? Yeah, so tell us more. Yeah, we're like it's basically an indoor training facility, and I and I'll let Brian elaborate. But like our idea of kind of doing it indoors, I mean, obviously the weather here is not the best. Um, so it's just nice to have this space, especially in the winter time. But, um, but also just to get, you know, get rid of worrying about your ball flight so much. You know, I think some people are maybe like a little bit intimidated of, you know, getting a golf lesson or having somebody watch them, or maybe even just like, maybe just going to the range, they feel like people are judging them or whatever. Like, we just want to get rid of all of that. You can't see your ball in here. You just, it just hits a screen, but your video plays up there and we're going to educate you. We're going to teach you how to maybe go about it a little bit differently. Um, and that's all we kind of really want you to worry about, but not, not worrying about like people caring about where your ball goes or how you're hitting it or whatever, but more concentrating on just learning and um, educating them on doing, doing things a little bit better. Just kind of slowing the process down a little bit and having fun, no judging, you know what I mean? that kind of thing it's, it's I think it's been super effective for the most part um golf instruction is tricky um people's goals and desires are are tricky a little bit sometimes um we we've just because we've had two years of experiencing um you know a variety of of talent you know from beginners to people that have played for 40 years and you know still are 25 handicappers things like that that wish they could change and all those but the nervous system is pretty strong. So once you establish some of your, your patterns and you don't, you don't really understand the tasks that it, that need to take place to change. It's pretty tricky because we, we're not, there's no magic potion to this thing, but we can't educate people and kind of stimulate some interest and organization into how they go about it. And that's what we, th that's kind of what the golf farm stands for. So you kind of lay out a platform and go, for most people go like, if you do this a little bit better than this, maybe two or three tasks or something, and this is, this is how you skill build them. And if you do this, 
things will change, but you're going to have to put in the time and the effort. And I think a lot of people don't get that a little bit. That's just from our experience here, but there's been a lot of it and continuity is big. So if you get somebody that wants to make change and they have a, a pattern of consistency with you, it'll happen, especially if they go and you actually see a different, like they change something like their take. Usually it's, it's pretty obvious. It's like set up and take away stuff. And if that stuff has changed, then you can kind of get into some movement patterns like, okay, let's turn our rib cage and turn our hips a little bit more. What does that mean to them? You know what I mean? They're unfamiliar with it. And that's what the golf farm is too, is that we have a, and we probably have 40 members or something. And we see these people on a weekly basis. And I think over time, and I'm talking over time, I've seen people that struggle for the first few months, but then there's that, that tipping point. And then you start to see it and you're like, you put in the time, you put in the effort. It was blood, sweat, and tears. And you suck for a while, but <laughs> you, you overcame it and you believed in the process. Right. But a lot of people want instant gratification and nobody can give you that. Yeah. What year did you guys uh, open? 2019, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been two years, a little, three, little over two years. Yep. That's so great. Now you guys are working on an online, an online thing, right? You want to talk? Yeah. Tell, tell us more about that. Yeah. So um, that's been a big project for us. Like kind of when COVID started, we, we really worked on the online Academy and building some content on there, um, you know, so we can help golfers like all over the world and um that's our goal in it and what's really cool about it is you can do it from home so um you can do it you know in your bedroom in your living room um you can do it on the driving range you can take it with you wherever but it doesn't doesn't have to be like where you're hitting balls it's just interactive training so you're actually getting up you're moving with brian and i um things that things that'll help your golf swing, just some small little body movement stuff that um, that's going to translate to your golf swing. It's going to make learning golf really easy. Um, you know, creating some better mechanics makes it really easy, just not hitting balls, but learning to coordinate your movements better. Um, and the cool part is it's interactive. So you're going to do it with like, you're going to do it with Brian and I, you're going to, we're going to show you the movements and we're going to do them together. We've had fun doing it. We'll, what we, we do, we'll keep driving content, but we really think it's a, especially today's day with everybody familiar with the internet and how much information there is, is that, and a lot of people didn't be honest with you. I mean, like who wants to go to some old gruff guy and take a golf lesson? You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, seriously, like you want to go have fun, right? Like you have fun at the golf farm, but like a lot of people you might not know, or, or you don't know who to go to. Well, now you can go on this online and you can just, it's educational. It can be interactive. It can be like, how do I fix my slice? How do I fix my hook? All those kind of things. And you can do it in your own terms and you can develop at your own rate. And you don't have to worry about like going to a golf course and spending some money, which may not help you anyways. You'll have this and it's, it's much more affordable actually. So there's some other content out there. Um, we hope ours is going to be the best, but we're about ready to launch it and we're excited about it. That's amazing. Yeah. I, um, before I met Daniel, my golf, my golf instructor, I would just go to the driving range and then YouTube a bunch of stuff. And then you're like, oh, yeah. well, does this guy really know what he's talking about? And you're just like, mm, maybe. Eh. And it was kind of like, and then I ended up being like, you know what, screw it. And I just, now I have bad habits because my, now my wrist turn or my feet are not set or whatever. That's oh, pretty cool though. You did use YouTube though. Yeah. I like did that. use YouTube. Yeah. That's and that, awesome. But it would be nice if there was a one-stop shop of legit instructors like you guys to go, go in and be like, okay, cool. If here's yeah. how I use my irons here, how I use my wood here. I use my you know, drivers and everything exactly. from backswing to everything. But so I think that's it's awesome. Just, that's it's reason. kind of funny. Cause she just mentioned something too. A lot of people don't know what, like when do you use the woods versus when do you use the iron? Some people don't even know those questions. You know what I mean? Like they're still learning, but there's, there is that order of events though. Mm -hmm. You just, you just gave me an idea. I think I actually need to kind of like for beginners, you actually have to talk about that. And I, and I think there's so much free information out there. Like, just like you said on YouTube. Right. And it's like, it'll be cool that like, it's all organized in one place for you. So you're not yeah. just like YouTubing something and then questioning what you're, what you're looking at. Instructor well, to instructor, like hot process. Yeah. Hot like process. New knows what, cause I ended up getting a book. It was like golfing for dummies. Uh -huh. And I was like, just to learn the different. Yeah. Dodie, so you're like, into it. I was so into it. It's actually my We went shelf. to Bandon. She played we at like 65 mile an hour wind I pouring down that. rain. That was, I mean. Yeah, I was golfing with Daniel and Kendra. And I was like, That's I got to know what I'm talking about. Of like, <laughs> instead of being like, Daniel, what iron do I use? Or what club? He goes, I don't know. How do you, how do you hit it? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> or going to a driving range and actually looking at a target instead of just like whacking it. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, where are you aiming? And I'm like, uh, that yellow flag? <laughs> like, yeah, I should probably look to aim somewhere. But <laughs> that is anyway. funny. That's so cool. So the, the online academy, it's going to launch. Is this a monthly subscription, a yearly subscription? Is What, what are we talking about here? Yeah, it's yearly. So there's kind of two options. There's like a base option, which is just our training. And then there's the training and education. So you kind of have two options there. But um, it's, yeah, it's yearly subscription. Do you know a price already? Can we shout this out or do we need to wait? Yeah, 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 for sure. One, 125 and 249. I got it. All right. For, 120, wait, 125 one, for the training uh, yearly and 249 for the education and training. Uh, I, I don't know what Dodie thinks. I feel like that's kind of stupid cheap. I, think I mean, it's, really almost, cheap, right? it's almost cheaper than, you know, coming in here and taking a golf lesson, you know, and you get us all year long. What? Yeah, what? You, what is a le- I, I I realize this is all relative to kind of whatever. What is a lesson? Just out of curiosity, it's sixty minutes, probably anywhere from a hundred to one hundred fifty bucks. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that same time, I can get you guys in my on my phone for a little bit for a hundred bucks more. You know, all year, year yeah. all year round, all and year have, round. At like, yeah, and have then it almost, part, it, go it almost puts it on them too to like okay, if I'm going to pay this money, I can literally go every single day on my own time, not having to worry about scheduling and all that stuff. Having oh. it at your fingertips, it's brilliant. So oh, yeah, it really is. And some of it, like what we've noticed um, for the last couple of years, because we're stimulated by it all the time now, I used to observe golf swing stuff, though, is just moving your body correctly is giant. And so the interactive stuff where we're doing like training, sometimes we'll probably do it live too, is just just being able to like, how do you do this? Where, how am I supposed to turn? Am I supposed to like sway or am I supposed to be stable? You know, those kind of things just to answer those questions, but you get to visualize us doing it and then following along kind of like P90X. Remember that? Oh yeah. That series. It's going to be a little bit like that where you're just, you're vis- you're watching and we're, we're talking you through it. Okay. I want you to push back a little bit. I want you to feel this. I want you to play on this tilted slant. I want you to turn your shoulders like this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Now, is there, is there a part where they could like reach out to you guys if they need to? Yes. Yep. 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 So, and like, could they like film themselves and send it to you and have you guys evaluate? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. I want to, I want to see your swing. Dodie. Sign me Man. up. Oh, <laughs> send it. Dodie makes a pretty good turn. Doesn't quite get her lower body fully engaged. Leaves both her knees kind of bent still, but yeah. makes a very aggressive move at the ball. Sweet. And, I mean, so I, I told her, I was like, Dodie, if you were to practice a little bit, I'd like to see you jump in some tournaments. I, I think casually right now, she could go shoot like a 95-ish, 90, without having to pick up the ball. And she's played 10 times in a year. Um, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. awesome. <laughs> she could play. We're going to be good at golf. Thanks, guys. <laughs> well, maybe she won't have you as much You definitely gave time. me the bug, Daniel. Well, Golf is hard. It's just hard. You know what I mean? Well, Daniel's hard. getting so good at it. I think he's thinking it's kind of like he's he's kind of coming, you know, like he's like, this game's not that hard. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, you know, I have a background in it, but I, I do think I have a certain ability to learn appropriately. Um, when I joined Oswego Lake in May of 2020 or 2018, I was an 8.8 handicap. And since then, I've just like, when I get a lesson, I really stick to that lesson until yeah. the next lesson. And that's all I work on. You know, I see some people they are like, oh, well, what are you working? I'm working on this. I'm working on this, <laughs> you know, and I'm just pounding ball. And it's like, dude, you're pounding balls two hours a day. Like you're not learning. And yeah. I think because I, you know, I just have that natural ability to learn how to shoot a jump shot or whatever. I've yeah. stuck with that game plan and, and it's paid off well. And thankfully I've had really good instructors in my life the last, you know, what three years that's helped so yeah it's hard to find good learners good teachers are tough but also finding that a balance of a good teacher and a good learner to like listen and really like absorb it yeah it's hard by the way that's so intuitive what you just said because you're exactly right because sometimes she hears me in there because i repeat myself a lot because i actually don't think people are naturally good learners so i'm like did you get that did you really do you see it can you visualize yourself doing, or are you going to go to, you know what I mean? I might just repeat myself because I don't trust them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which I think is important. Yeah. And then you keep going back to visual, like visualizing you did it as a player, you're doing it as a coach and you're harping it on the people that you're teaching. 
I think that's such a huge thing that I don't, I don't think a lot of people do. Like no, I don't think soaking Ath it in and visualizing it. Yeah, I think athletes do. It's kind of like I played hoops through high school too. You know, it's like, you know, up on front, up through the, I would like, I love technique. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it doesn't matter what art form it is. I just enjoy it. And that's probably why I'm like, you know, enamored by this whole building we have here. But I, I like it. I'm trying to like always like manipulate my technique. And I, I enjoy that. Some people don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so- They just want to be like, good at it. Like you said, instantly. Yeah. yeah. Even though they, they don't realize that functional movement creates so many good feels, right? So once you get function, now you get to get in the feel world, which is great. You're just reacting like you would in hoops. It's the same thing with golf. You're like, oh, that felt good. Because feels change all the time in golf and you have to embrace that. You It never stays the same. So you're actually after- you know, Daniel goes out and shoots 66. He's like, God, that felt great. But I don't know, you know, I'm not going to sustain that feel I had today. So I'm going to have to keep finding new ones. You might come back to that feel, but it's going to be fleeting because I don't know, bodies change. You know, some days you wake up and you feel, all, you know, mobile and stuff. And some days you're stiff and all that kind of thing. So the feels are not there. But if you're, if your basic motion kind of is sustained, you can just come in, you can just get feel all the time. And, and that's what keeps you, you know, progressing and being consistent with the game i want to be selfish here i want i want to transition to hear all about augusta national amy's rocking the hat yeah <laughs> you guys went on an epic trip in february i believe back yeah. to augusta <laughs> i want to hear about augusta i i want i want you guys to just give me like everything right now I could ask questions, but I want to hear about it. Brian's played it as a player. Has it changed? Were there leaves on the ground? Because I always hear there's no leaves on the ground. I mean, how perfect was it? Yeah, give us, give us, what was it like, Amy, your first time? Just get, give it to us. Well, there, there's so many stories. I mean, we kind of have to start from the beginning because um, this whole thing, the timing of it kind of happened, you know, during COVID, right? So. Mm -hmm. You've got all these crazy things. We were supposed to go um, the first time back in November. So we were supposed to go the week after the November Masters. Yeah, I get a call um, driving home one night and it's John Donahoe, the CEO of Nike. And I'm like, oh, geez, you know what I mean? Like he's going to have some complicated golf question. It's loaded with information and I got to be ready to give him the right answer. You know, like a simple one. No, he goes, he goes, when was the last time you were at Augusta? And I said, 96. And I said, I won in 99, but the criteria changed. I didn't, I wasn't top 50 in the world, so I didn't get to go. He goes, you want to go back? And I said, hell yeah, I want to go back. <laughs> he goes, okay, get your shit together. We're leaving next Friday or something. But it wasn't that. So he was going to like, okay, my personal assistant, she'll send you all this information because we had to get COVID tests and anything. So anyways, he comes back in and then I'll let you talk some. He comes back in. <laughs> And he, this, he's got this whole thing. We're going to go from here to San Jose, and then we're going to get on an, another private aircraft to go back east. And um, he goes, well, so-and-so dropped. Do you think Amy wants to go? And I'm like, she's right over there. Why don't you go? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, here it comes. So that's kind of how we – That that's – go ahead. You can, you can keep going. Okay. Yeah. So, so I get an invite, which I was a little bit jealous at first because I'd gone and played Waverly with him and he like shot his best round ever. And he's like, you're my good luck charm. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to Augusta. Let's go. <laughs> and then he invites Brian and I'm kind of like, Damn. dang it. <laughs> so then I get, I get somebody drops, which who, I don't know who would drop on that trip, but yeah. um, so then we're like, okay, we have to get a COVID test before we fly over there. And there's all these like emails and protocols and all this stuff. And then we have to get tested again when we get there. So we get this kit and we like send it in and I'm like freaking out. I'm like, she, she, something was going to get this disrupted. Is like, everything's getting shut down again. I'm like, the world's ending. I'm going to have We're COVID. Gonna I'm go. not going to be able to go. And um, anyway, somebody on the trip ends up having COVID. It wasn't us. Um, but um, so it gets canceled. And so I'm pretty bummed. And then then we fast forward past the holidays and all that. And we get, and get we're wondering if we're going to get the invite again. <laughs> yeah. You can't ask. Hey, can we go? We find your private plane and go. Yeah. yeah. Right. You got that so, thing gassed up for us. We're ready to go. <laughs> so, so now we're, we're getting on the Nike plane and we're flying over there to Augusta, which same deal. We still have to get this COVID test when we get there. Um, which is a whole other thing. Uh, and, yeah. Um, I, that, that's my, this has got to be my story. Yeah, yeah. So we take this, 
amazing aircraft over there and it's got graphics from i'm just blown away like i've been on a few of these planes this one is like this is amy's first ride i'm like holy moly what do you think of this thing so anyways we get to we get to augusta and he told us before we left he said we're gonna have covid tests the minute we get on property and if one of us has it we're flying directly back <laughs> So we go in there and it's pretty, it was, cause it was kind of like uh, retrofitted for the masters in the fall. So this, this yeah. one of the cottages was already like, well, first of all, we drive down Magnolia lane. Yeah. yeah come like, on, Brian. You can't skip yeah, Magnolia. Not that part. <laughs> we get off the private jet. We drive down Magnolia lane and I'm freaking out. Cause we have this COVID test coming. So I don't even get to like, enjoy it. We're going straight down Magnolia lane and straight to the COVID testing center. <laughs> straight in, like out of the bus into the little cottage. And it looks Wait, like time out real quick yeah. for the, these rookie people, Magnolia lane explain. What Dodie, are you serious? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> That's okay. You got to go. All right. It's, it's, I had to ask. I mean, first of all, like, I, I mean, I didn't it's know this. A, it's but the gates to golf heaven. Yeah. Man. Yes. And Augusta is okay, kind of here. like not the greatest town ever, but you like, you know, you're driving on this weird street and you just take a right and suddenly you're in the gates and you're like. Really? Oh, is it like, like, seriously you're... like that? It's like you're driving down, there's a <laughs> no. Fred Meyer right there. Well, uh, or, you know, not a Fred Meyer, yeah, like, but Home Depot's right there. And, and... gas stations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally, Daniel. Yeah. It's changed a little bit. I mean, the, the, but when I played in the nineties, it was like seven 11, a couple of gas stations. Oh, it was gross. It was like, it was nothing. And then suddenly you just, you just take a right and you're like, boom, you're on Magnolia oh. Lane. Oh, I gotcha. <laughs> so anyways, we, we get, we get boom. to the, the, we get to the cottage and it looks really formal. Like I wasn't really expecting that. I was thinking like, we're going to take a COVID test, but no, they've got like, it was like, like almost like we were in, in a doctor's office. So we fill out all this paperwork. We do the swab. We all sit down, social distancing, you know, whatever. And we're sitting there. And at some point there, it's going to be about 20 minutes. She comes around the corner and she goes, well, first of all, it was the longest 20 minutes oh, in was, the history of the world. Sure. <clears throat> And I'm like, I think I got a sore throat. Um, this is just over. <laughs> You're feeling bad. I know. So she comes out and she goes, and I'm wondering how, like, is, they're just going to tell us all we're fine. Or we're going to, or somebody's going to come around the corner and go, you know what? Sorry. You know, Hanninger's, and he's got COVID. She comes out and she goes, Mr. Donahoe, please follow me. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, totally. And he's, he, so now 30 seconds or something goes by he doesn't come back and say thumbs up or anything i don't even know he's disappeared miss simonton follow me please i'm like holy crap this is not good <laughs> you know what i mean and then <laughs> then his good friend from chicago him and i was last i'm like oh my god there's for sure i've sat up there for a good three or four they're minutes they're telling <laughs> them that you have it and they're gonna oh, have that's, <laughs> that's exactly right <laughs> for sure anyways that was the start to our trip nobody had covid so so we, okay. got, we got to just we got to go just, enjoy the weekend. <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. By the way, I appreciate you guys asking us because it was such a different perspective than I'd had in ninety five, ninety six. I'd never seen the venue, and and John was such a, a a unique host to us. Like he took so much pride in sharing every ounce and nuance of Augusta National that I'd never had that perspective. The different buildings, and you know. Um, what the the uh, patron does and where he comes through the gates and what the expectation was and all the new facilities, practice areas, all that kind of, and the history behind it. Um, it was just really cool to have somebody like him kind of just illustrate that and showcase that to us. How'd you guys play? She was the star. Amy was totally the star. <laughs> we haven't even got to the... the yeah, the scorecard. I want, you know. Scorecard, I, like I know. I don't know. She played great, but the caddies were brilliant and they were really enamored by Amy. Um, I don't think they'd been around female golfers that could play like she does. Uh, so it was really fun to watch her. And I'm glad that she was successful there too. Anyways, cause Augusta is like, you can get, you know how golf can be temperamental, right? We had a nice group where nobody was perfect out there, of course, but everybody enjoyed each other. And we had a great couple of days at Augusta national. I mean, it really was, but Amy was definitely the shining star. Yeah, I mean, it was just like, I was a little bit nervous, but like, 
and like on the first tee when we first teed off like yeah. there's you know the people in the pro shop were like watching us and like Peyton Manning's like playing behind us yeah. and I'm like a little bit nervous but John was like honestly like so, so cool he's like you know like we just hit it till we like it and like <laughs> you know you like take two shots off the first tee like it just made you feel like super hit comfortable until you like it I love that yeah and then and then you're like all right and and um you know like here you know that putt's good or whatever and and so it was a good good vibe and and it's just like I don't know something about being at that place it kind of takes the nerves out of you you're like this is this is pretty special and um it's hard not to smile the entire time because it's like it's pretty surreal it's it's every bit um the green speeds were as fast as I remember so we're in the middle of winter so I'm thinking you know like I wonder how they keep the course condition and stuff like that's not easy in the winter maybe let the grass grow oh my gosh they were lightning they were impossible basically because Cold. I haven't played a lot of golf the last couple of years. And then we just go like, like it's running 13, 14s on greens that are like super slow. It's like, it's like, like a swigo right in the summer when your greens get fast. Yeah. As fast as they get. They, yeah. they get, they were that fast in the middle of the winter. So I was just like, wow, to this play. But again, I mean, it's kind of surreal to be out there with two or three groups for the entire day and the place has no patrons. So you just look around and you're like, I've got a wow. guest of national to myself. It was just amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Do you, I mean, seriously, though, I've heard you don't see leaves on the ground. Like, apparently, they're just picked up, like, the ground screw, like, it's immaculate. Uh, they're absorbed I, in the ground. <laughs> there's some funny things there that, like, you just don't know what just happened. Like, we went to breakfast one day, and I don't know. I'm, I maybe used this much, like, out of the lotion dispenser thing. And then I went, I, I noticed that it was, like, brand new again, and I'd been gone for, like, 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know there's some special things about that place that way I was yeah, telling they've, got, sorry, yeah, sorry. they've got all these like tunnels underground that you like drive under you know like it's it's pretty crazy and all these buildings that like just pop up like John will you know they're closed in the summertime and then it'll come back after the summertime and there's like a brand new building that just popped up like out of nowhere like you know and, and all this stuff is only used like one week a year like you know, it's all sort of surrounding, you know, the masters. And, um, and I think that was what was really cool about John was like, he just how much the membership there like appreciates, you know, not only what they have, which is pretty cool, because these are like pretty successful people like they're they know they're, they have this gift of being a member at Augusta, but also like how, how much history there is with the masters tournament. I think that's really big to that whole place to all the members there. So it was cool. Like, Brian was there and, um, one one other story is like on the tv so you stay in the cabins right and um on the tv like you can either watch tv or they have like every year of the masters on demand so like the first night we get there we pull up the 95 masters and we watch it and um and by the time we left like at the end of the weekend like every member on property every caddy had watched oh, his masters and they just were watched like, you yeah and and that was super cool i think that's sick Oh, yeah, it was, it was so cool. funny. Like, bump. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dodie. Yeah. So I, so I watched the fist bump and everything. How do you feel that Tiger Woods took that from you? <laughs> I know because I started, you saw that thing. I, <laughs> I you did it way before him. He told way me. Before. I, have oh, you yeah. ever had a conversation? Have you had a conversation with him? No, I haven't. I, you have to ask him because I bet you he saw you do that and was like, <laughs> oh my God, like I'm it. totally taking that. Cause it's yeah. just like, if we put side to side, I would have, yeah, he totally copied you. I know. I totally would have so fun being that guy. Do you know what I mean? I really, I, like I did, I, I totally wanted to be that guy. Just never got good enough to go do it more and more because I wanted, I, I felt like, you know, that our responsibility was to entertain, you know what I mean? Came at, at like, it was an instinct, but like, I enjoyed that part. So when I think of, Oh my God, it was awesome. It was um, awesome. D Kirk, D Kirk, so how did, how can uh, people or listeners find that video? Yeah. You can find it all over the golf form. We're just Yahoo, Brian Hinegar, the masters. I mean, yeah, because that shot is awesome. Yeah. It's just pretty cool. Full, just, oh, it uh, I know, in I your bag, in your baggy clothes. Brian, I, got, <laughs> oh my God. I have to admit, I think, you know, to Amy, awesome. I mean, to a lot of people around here, you are that guy, you know, when I, when I see you, I, I think of Brian Hinegar and that guy, I really do every single time. Yeah. I'm, I'm fortunate that I, I got to have that. And, and again, cause we're talking about, I was fortunate to go back and see Augusta and it, it, and, and it was slowed down. You know what I mean? Like when I went there and as a 
just a warrior golfer guy. I just, you know, drive in, put my cleats on and go to work. You know what I mean? And I actually got to kind of like, gosh, I mean, like, especially when we're down on like amen corner, you know what I mean? Cause I remembered that so special in the tournament, um, kind of the scoring area or, you know, your ultimate demise, one of the two is be, be down there with like four people that you enjoy being with and the caddies. And, you know, that was pretty surreal to like, you know, like reflect back when I was doing that. So that was really fun. Yeah. And we basically played, we played 27 the first day, right, Amy? Yeah. Yep. 27 holes. And then we had a wonderful dinner. Um, and then the next day we played 18 and then we played the par three. So that's how we were going to, we're going to do it. There's a story about the par three here that we're skipping out on and I, and I've tried to bring it up, but let, let's wrap up the Augusta on this par three. Totally, I know. Tell it, yeah. Well, there's a couple of stories on that. First of all, like you're, you're kind of like, <laughs> you want it, you don't want to leave the place. You know what I mean? You're like, Oh gosh, we got the par three course, which is brilliant, but it means that, you know, time is coming to an end. So of course these caddies are just like worshiping Amy now at this point, you know, they've never seen anything like it. Second hole, the par three course. I'm kind of like, I'm she's up. You were first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I wonder how she's going to kind of negotiate this one. I'm like, because the pin was barely on the front. And I'm like, she might have to go into that like front edge and kind of pop it up. Yeah, like hit the little berm and then pop up and release. Oh, she just did it. Pops up, spins right, goes right in the hole. And these caddies, I'm telling you, are like, running circles it's like tom watson when he <laughs> chipped in at the pebble beach that year they're literally like this they're like this is the greatest thing i've ever seen so she does that which i'm really excited for her and the just the enjoyment and friendship because we're all like okay it can't get any better than this we go around to 18 okay. or number nine i mean and john is donahoe is telling the story about being uh a member host on that T one year during the par three tournament. And he said, yeah, I got to tell you a little story. So we stop on the T box. This is going to be the last hole. And the three caddies are, uh, no, he was talking about Arnold and Jack and, and uh, Gary player walking up the trail. And he's like, Oh boy, here they come. You know what I mean? Like, what's this going to be like three iconic figures, you know, and then he step on the T and he's, he's, he can't wait to tell this story and how, respectful they were and how thankful they were to all the volunteers not just john but they were just going around you know like pretty cool experience for john because he wanted to share it and then he goes and by the way jack you know said to his grandson who was caddying with the bib overalls hit a shot for me and then boom he makes a hole in one and so john's telling this whole story and then this was pretty cool i thought so i'm going to tell it on air he goes just because like this was a special couple of days for me you know what i mean i'd like let augusta now this gentleman that doesn't even know me very good takes me clear back there and i'm having the time of my life like it's, it's exceeding my expectation of it and he goes he goes so there's a standing tradition here when somebody makes a hole in one it's the obligation of the member to pay each of the caddies 500 dollars. i'm like oh can I be, I'm, I'm a caddy right now. <laughs> I carried a club somewhere and he starts, he goes like one at a time. He gives, he says, Amy, give Nick 500, please give, you know, so-and-so 500. He does it four times. Wow. I, could this trip get any better than us <clears throat> finishing on the ninth hole, the par three course and these stories about hole in wands and you know, the whole thing, the whole experience. So that was kind of a gust of wrapped up right there. And then we got to fly that beautiful plane back. <laughs> Wow. That's Hold awesome. one on Augusta. Wow. Oh, I know. And she's got, where is that thing? You should show first, me. You should go here. I'm going to get it. First time yeah. Yank that thing off the wall. Are you kidding? These me? icons who played. Yeah. And then you're just was, like, yeah, no biggie. It was my first hole in one too. So that was kind of. <laughs> Let's. That was your first one ever. <laughs> yeah. See that thing? Oh my God. <laughs> I know. And it's got a oh. score on there. She shot 25 on the par three course. Wow. And she's got everybody's autograph. What a simple game. Um, we need to kind of slowly wrap this up. Dodie did have a call at nine. We've pushed it out a little bit. Um, I'm having way, this is way more fun. <laughs> you guys are the perfect people to ask this. Why is golf the greatest game on earth? Oh, Amy. I'm going first. Um, why is golf the greatest game? There's so many answers to this. Um, 
for me just because like I'm obsessed with it um it's just because like you just can't perfect it like to me it's just like there's always something to work on there's always something you can get better at and like I think just from like a life standpoint like that gets you excited to like get out of bed in the morning you know like that that gets you excited to like go work on a piece of your game that needs work because there's always there's always a piece of your game that needs work you can't really always put it together um and so I think just just for me it's like I'm always obsessed with trying to like get a little bit better at it yeah from uh you I would reiterate everything you said but also kind of the life skills that are developed through it too you know what I mean um because it does it's a very difficult game um but it gives you balance it creates humility um respect you know there's rules to follow all those core values golf represents so many things you know what I mean and it's something that Dodie, like you now, you're a phenomenal athlete, but you there's not a whole lot. You can play some league basketball and stuff like that, but golf you can play for your, the entirety of your life. Yeah. And for the entirety of your life, you can actually try to get incrementally better at it a little bit. And you don't really have to have anybody with you. Like I played a high level of tennis and played basketball and I miss the team sport stuff, but golf is kind of fun because you can go out there and you can kind of get, and I like to, I'm kind of a loner, but that's probably why I was good at golf. I like to go out there and just kind of like get better at my craft. And I think that's what's unique about golf, really. Um, as long as you kind of just understand that it's the most difficult game that anybody could ever play. <laughs> <laughs> so it's rewarding. Speaking yeah. of. Um, and then when you get it, yeah. Some big news that Dodie and I are going to talk about after this pod. But Brian, do you know any good golf courses in Madison, Wisconsin? I know. She's, she's going to Madison. You played there. Oh, you are? Yeah. Yeah, I just took a, the assistant women's basketball coach there at Wisconsin. That's what you're going to do? That's what I'm going to do. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, I played the Champions Tour has the – God, I can't think of the course right now, but it's a great golf course. It's where the college uh, team plays. Um, I don't know, but I can, I'm can. i going to find out some good golf for you at Madison. Talk yeah. to John and see if uh, the three of you guys and John can take the, the jet out to Madison and see we come visit you. Come visit. Yeah, you better make Wisconsin a Nike school first, but yeah. We're okay. Oh, that's that a, work okay. Well, that's we're gonna see him next time I see him. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we we jumped in this. Amy Amy told me that she wanted. We're gonna banter, Brian. We always banter about some topic. I hope okay. you guys brought some some prep to this. I'm not. We good did. At this. Yeah, we did. Sports. Prep? Sports yeah. goats, we, whatever you want this to be, I'm going to argue and knock something you say. So the order is going to go Amy, Brian, Dodie, me, and then we'll <laughs> circle back. I'll go twice. Then we'll go Dodie, Brian, Amy. Okay. So I'm first. All right. Sweet. Somehow there's like, I feel like there's banter already in the golf yeah. form, which is why this is one. Oh, she's no, I picked this one because we, we argue about like the greats and sports. Like, you know, he's a Jack Nicholas guy. Like I'm Tiger Woods all day. Right. Like, don't, don't, like, okay. Don't steal people's yeah. picks. But we argue it. No. And you know what my number one pick is going to be. It's going to be Tiger Woods because Tiger changed the sport and in a big way, um, and it happened, you know, sort of during your career, which I think is really cool. But, mm -hmm. um, but you know, for a generation that's sort of my age and your guys' age, it, it, you know, it's the reason that I played golf. And I think there's so many people that would say the same thing. And, um, same. and that's just changing a sport. So we're is, talking goats in golf right now? No, whatever. No, sports. It's Tiger. It's any sport. It's any sport. Yeah, but it's why do you why do you think it's Jack, Brian? I guess is the question. Well, it is the Golden Bear. He won eighteen <laughs> majors. Tiger's got fifteen. So the, here's Those here's something winning. I That's always debate thing. about <laughs> people. Is it really? You know, people are saying t Tony Finau is not one of the best players in the world right now because he never wins. It's like, well, yeah. is that really the bar, or is the bar like somebody that gets there every single tournament? Like to me. Like the best player at the local golf course is the dude that shows up every single day and finishes right there. Maybe yeah. not the dude that wins one out of like 20 rounds on a Saturday. Well, yeah. that's the thing too. It's like, there's no definition of the goat. That's yeah. why they're, I mean, it's, you kind of take it, how, which it will be interesting with how this all pans out with other, other athletes. But yeah, there's really no definition of what is the definition of a goat, true goat. 
No, uh, I think I think that the goat is the guy that you turn on the TV to watch, no matter what sport it is. It's like that's the goat to me. So do you want to do you want to tune into that, or you tune in and you go, oh, that there that guy's on T. I don't really care. You know what I mean? Well, so that's I the point. Think, or is it the ones that win, or is yeah. it the one that changes the games? Yeah, yeah. But I okay. think we can all safely say, just having like this past Masters that we just finished, like not having Tiger playing in it doesn't matter if he's competing like whatever not having him playing in it is a game changer like totally. apparently it was the least watched masters ever apparently this one was yeah i thought maybe everything might be down yeah so that's my number one tiger woods, tiger woods. Yeah, brian, brian what's your what's your first pick in this draft it could be any sport michael jordan <laughs> Michael good, Jordan by far. Good. I mean, like, it's not even <laughs> close because I, I just know, like, I just mentioned, like, how I was consumed by him, how much I watched him back in the day when I, especially when I was traveling, you know, TNT and TBS, they had him on every night. I couldn't wait. And he gave it 4,000% every time he played, much like Tiger Woods. You know what I mean? Like when we, because I agree with you for the most part, it's just, you just love somebody that's passionate, that loves what they're doing. You know what I mean? And that's what I saw with Michael Jordan. Miss him. Good pick. Yeah, yeah, I think I mean great I'm pick. Not, I'm not gonna <laughs> I mean, I'm not arguing. <laughs> Dodie, yeah. she's just like she's she's I mean, look at all the basketball stuff and you know in her background behind her. She's got her basketball. Know, yeah, exactly. Like, get out of here. So yeah, I, I had DVDs and documentaries and all that of Michael Jordan growing up. So I'm with you on that. Yeah. No banter there. What all you right. got, Dodie? Your pick here. Muhammad Ali. Ooh. I wrote that one down. So I mean, I wasn't, a, I'm not a big boxer really into boxing at all, but like when he was, when he was on the TV, when he was fighting and like you wanted to watch, which is crazy. So when we were kids, um, I would, I grew up with two brothers. So we were always just like into sports and we were watching Muhammad Ali and we were like, let's write him a letter and see if he'll sign a picture for us. Two weeks later, a, a picture signed by, by him showed up in our mail. So like, that's sweet. That is sweet. Yeah, it's like out of nowhere. We don't have any connections or anything. We just loved watching him. Loved his like, like float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. It's like I just said that came in my head yeah. right there. I was like, I was gonna say it wrong. Iconic, yeah. iconic. And then fast forward, when I was in college, we were in Chicago. Ran into him and his wife at a um, at a restaurant, oh, and really? was, it was welcomed to... us, and we introduced ourselves. And like he couldn't, he wasn't really functional, yeah. but it was just kind of like, all right, this guy's the man. But yeah. Yeah. Like Love that pick. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to go a thread here. So we snake draft. So I get two in a row before we go back. I'm going to go with yeah. a thread in terms of athletes, best athletes all time. Yeah. This pick is like my guy. And I, I know I've mentioned this on the pod before Bo Jackson. I just think he's yeah. the best yeah. athlete of all time. And I don't I have him on my list too. <laughs> yeah. He's on my list too. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Right. I mean like seven foot high jumper in high school. And yeah. he never high jumped before. And the dude's, you know, a machine. I don't. That's yeah. Nice. I got like his autograph over here. I think Bo's the best. I know. I, I did too. It, his his career was cut short. We were looking for like baseball, football. I mean, it was just so many gifts. Incredible. Bo knows. I still have that shirt somewhere. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. fit anymore. <laughs> uh uh, next one athlete that i'm going to circle back for my round two pick and this is this is like a complete dark horse i know somebody's going to jump on me for this pick ashton eaton and for those that don't know who ashton eaton is he won the decathlon in college he went to uh professional won the Deca gold medal and he he, falls? what's what is he from klamath falls no, no you're thinking of dan o'brien dan o'brien sorry yeah um they, no, yeah, Ash that's why that's why Ashton can't be the goat because a Ashton's <laughs> Ashton's the only the second person ever in the decathlon to go over the nine thousand point barrier. I mean, he he's like the greatest athlete in men's track and field history. So that's I'm going athletes. That was my thread. Goat, I so goat. That's a goat. If if somebody's the best goat of their sport, that's a goat, right? Is it not? It's yeah. not their sport. It's of his event. He is the <laughs> goat of the, no, he's the, of, of the sport. Goat of track and field. Well, if you do a decathlon, you're like the best of like everybody normally, right? Like oh, yeah. not a really narrow. I mean, thing. Usain Bolt could have been up there with track and field. Usain Bolt would probably be the fastest guy ever in history, but not, he's not the best athlete. But he, you, 
the thing is, is no, he's not. I can totally he do a triple agree. jump? Can he do a high jump? I know. Can I mean, he probably. Pull can he do a hurdles? I can, bet he throw the, can he throw the discus? I know. Probably. I don't think I wouldn't think so, actually. I know that th- those guys are incredible. I don't even know. I mean, I've never done any of those those things that you talked about, but those guys are superior athletes to be able to do all those different skill sets. That's amazing. That's like a golfer weirdo. You know what I mean? See? You can do it all. Thanks, Brian. Do it all. Yeah, Brian, just me yeah I'm not knocking him as a great as a hey, great. Hey, Dodie, who do you got? Let me talk to Mac <laughs> about your next pick. Kobe Bryant. Oh, I like it. Because be- wait, is he only- better than MJ? No, it's not a goat. Nope. Get out of here. No, but <laughs> we're talking about changing the game. And from as a female basketball player, what he did continued his career after playing as well. One being iconic in um, for the Lakers. Then his epic retirement tour and Mamba out to then transitioning into women's basketball and being an advocate. Like he made that orange WNBA hoodie relevant, which then brought support and more eyes to the WNBA. Now with the WNBA really exploding, it's finally they're getting the stage to really present represent themselves where they're, yeah, they're top-notch athletes. So he's greater than just basketball and that's why he's the GOAT because he just brings so much more. Oh my god, that was too good of an answer. That was awesome. I, I respect that. Me too. I mean, I I respect it, but we already picked Jordan. He's the greatest of all time. You can't just be, and we all agreed. You can't just be like, oh yeah, well this guy's also the greatest basketball player of all time. I mean, I just don't think that works. The but, greatest of all time, right? Not okay. basketball player, greatest of all opinion. time. Go. We do it. Okay, that's why we do it. Ryan, what do you got? God, I'm kind of struggling with a couple people. So, I have such a. Uh, respect for tennis that i had to throw roger federer in there he's on my list. He's on my list. yeah because those 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 guys like because i played a lot so you 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 know, you've got this emotional person that's playing and then you've got all this strategy and then you've got this person that's quick as a cat and kind of have you know like touch and force and all the things that it takes to be a great tennis player and much like the goats have they have a desire to win and win and win more and so Roger Federer is kind of one of my picks. Um, my answer is not as good as yours, Dodie, when, in terms of like transforming the sport or, you know. <laughs> I mean, I he made uh, that headband I mean, relevant. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I know. But he's not a Nike guy anymore either. So I'm. Yeah, there's like some okay. drama around that and his logo. Uh, yeah. yeah he made like a guy. personal yeah. logo or something. That was the best. Yeah, but I do. I love Roger. Yeah. Okay. Respect, I respect that. Yeah, Amy. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go two rounds just because we got that's gonna be eight. So this is gonna round this out is, our draft, I think. This, this is, is it. my last pick. Gosh, now it's hard because I oh I was really looking forward going. to my third one. Me too. Do you want Let's blue? Do okay, I guess we'll go a third round. I just yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, good. Because I have I'll two. Okay, okay, okay. All right. First, I'm gonna go with Michael Phelps. Oh, I didn't have that. Um I thought of him but... greatest Olympian of all time. And it's not even it's not even up for an argument. What about what about making a cameo at the Masters? What do you mean? He was in the crowd when Tiger hit that tee shot on. Oh the yeah, 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 yeah. He was true. he was on sixteen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he's a golfer, so there you go. He's obviously a goat. I mean, yeah, I think I feel like you can't really banter that because you just look at the what is Sports Illustrated with all the gold medals around his neck from one Olympics. That's, alone. A, good That's a really good one, actually. That is a good one because he is the goat of swimming. Yeah. Okay. Loved, loved watching Phelps. Um, and then am I going again? Yeah. yeah. Okay. My last pick is my man, Tom Brady. I knew that was coming. Yeah, I knew that was coming. I was waiting for him to. Honestly, uh, would have picked him first or anywhere because I love Tom. And so, yeah, greatest football player of all time, in my opinion. I think that's fair. Yeah, that's a fair one. Except that I'm going to throw Joe Montana out there. Because you didn't <laughs> grow up with him and he was the GOAT. And Wait, he'll is- be the GOAT. He's the, he, he, basically had the combination of the skill to win and the skill to pull off things right in the last minute when they needed it. And he was surrounded by some athletes, but you didn't get to grow up with Joe Montana. So I just Tom went Brady. Tom Brady and you went Joe Montana. Yeah. I had to just throw Joe Montana out there. Oh, that's your pick. Okay. Hero. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Joe Montana. He, I mean, from college through pro, I think he was uh, five. Well, Joe Montana, maybe five Super Bowls rings. Easy. <laughs> 
did he really win that match? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and and Walsh's book. I mean, everything about that Niners team is kind of. Yeah, the only pretty... problem with that Joe is you know he left and went to Chiefs after all that and his career kind of slid down. But I know where Tom went to Tampa and well, kind of like stepped it up. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say, and it would be the exact same if Tom would have gone to Tampa and they would have been horrible, right? Oh, I know, I agree. I know. I, I think know. I think this past year he's officially the goat. No argument. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I might be on Brian's side with this. I, I grew up with oh, Joe wow. Montana. Like I just, yeah. I know. Cody, what do you got? Or no, I have yeah, um, yeah. another tennis player, Serena Williams. Oh, love yes. it. Love it. She yeah. makes me want to watch tennis. If yep. she's on, I want to watch her. I actually got to see her in New York at the U.S. Open um, play against her sister, and it was epic. Like, I was in the nosebleeds way up, but still, there's no bad seat no. there. Yeah. I mean, who, who are you rooting for, by the way? Serena. You are? Yeah. yeah. I mean, talk about changing a sport right there. Exactly. That's women's tennis is, I mean, she is women's tennis. She is symbolic of a lot of things, actually. And she's not afraid to speak her mind and get out there and just be tough. And I'm like, I'm, I'm here to win. Yeah. And she had a kid and she had a kid and had yeah. those things and then still came back and competed. I actually got to kind of meet her at the ESPYs 2010, I think. Uh -huh. And she had her little posse and was just like, it was just like, don't bother me. But she still kind of made a look and was like, like, thanks. Because so a real goat, right? If we take Serena Williams out of the picture and we think of tennis, it's probably kind of just a blur. But with Serena Williams and women's tennis, she made it. She put it. She, yep. it's, a, it's just a different perspective for women's tennis. And without her, it wouldn't be the same for sure. So she Definitely. is a goat. Yeah, she's All right. Last, Last one. one. Oh, let's go. This, this is going to be another controversial pick. <laughs> oh, my really least awesome. favorite sport on the history of the planet you know after the masters like i kind of stopped watching a lot of sports barry bonds oh, i I, you love I have him you down love. dude you oh are. okay okay yeah right like i just think of like how dominant he was oh. how good he was at his craft like you take everything else away like maybe he probably wasn't the best outfielder but that dude's hips oh my gosh he was so explosive he's just yeah Best hitter all time. Damn, Dude, best best know. hitter, but from base from the baseball world though, I would go like, I would do like Babe Ruth or Jackie Robinson for baseball. You can, sure, you can go with those guys, but so you can't give me you can't give me shit about Michael Jordan be the goat and then picking Kobe Bryant with you're saying Barry no. Bonds, but then also Babe Ruth. I didn't say that. I, I, I <laughs> nobody nobody picked a basketball player ahead of time and then agreed on it and then pick another basketball player. That's what you did, Dodie. Nobody said like, "Hey, Jackie Robinson." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's right." And then pick Barry Bonds. That's yeah, but if, but unofficially, you just said Barry Bonds, but then you're like, "Well, yeah, Babe Ruth too." No, I said we could banter that, Jackie. but in in this instance, I I chose Barry Bonds. So are we banter? Get down from the cheap seats, Dodie. No, like like <laughs> like these these girls are too young to have appreciated Barry Bonds to watch him at the plate so it's back to that goat theory of mine is like if you want to turn on the tube to specifically watch somebody it's like watching a basketball game and you just watch one guy on the team because that's who you're focused on that's that was Barry that's Barry Bonds at the plate I mean he was mad he can watch well first of all he had such a fast bat and a short swing or something and just clink things things right out of the park he would be walked pretty much nine out of ten times so you weren't going to see him even swing the bat. He'd watch these things go by, and he knew if they were balls or strikes, and he'd only swing when that thing was coming. It was just – he was so dominant at the plate, and, and everybody feared him so much. That's why I like – I had him down, Daniel, on my thing too. But then I'm like, oh, they're going to get into the steroid thing, and they're going to pick on me. And I almost – I that's almost different. tapped I mean, into that, but – You never know about any of these athletes in steroids, to be honest. True. I mean, his apparently Michael Phelps – yeah, apparently Michael Phelps had something. Yeah. I mean, you don't think Tiger Let's get back to Barry Bonds, though. His, his head multiplies by about... <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's true. That body transformation is... <laughs> um, all right, guys. We probably need to wrap this up. I know we all got work days. Um, appreciate having you guys on the pod. That's Everything fun. you guys do. We'll uh, link to the IG so everybody can uh, check your stuff out and link to the online academy. Awesome. Yeah, good, yeah, good luck with the launch. Thanks for having us, yeah. Dodie. Good luck in your new venture. So exciting. Thank you. We'll, thank get you, thank that, you. we'll get that plane up in the air and fly over there and play some golf. And But yeah. you might have to come visit us before you go, though. And, you know, there's a ton Definitely of golf in, in Wisconsin, like what, Whistling Straits? Oh, there's some great. There's some, 
Yeah, yeah and then like uh, Mike Kaiser that developed Man and Dunes, um, there's, he's got some golf courses out in Wisconsin too. It's called Sand Valley. Yeah. So okay. it's, it's like, it kind of mimics Band and Dunes now and you can stay there. It's, yeah, they look like, uh, you know, Lynx style golf courses in the middle of, of Wisconsin. They're supposed to be crazy good. Definitely gonna check, the, just wrote that down. All right. Yeah. All right, thanks guys. All right guys. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, cheers. cheers. cheers.